Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing a $19 Harbor Freight hand plane. This is their high end plane that has wood handles, brass fittings, cast iron body. This is their top of the line hand plane they offer. Let's dig into it and see if it's any good. So Harbor Freight in the store, I don't know about online. I haven't looked, but Harbor Freight in the store, sorry, I was chewing a granola bar before this. Unprofessional, Matt. So in the store, they offer two types of hand planes. Um, they offer like a cheaper one that comes with like a little block plane. Um, so they offer one that comes with a little cheaper, like a mini block plane, not this one. This is a nicer Stanley, but they do offer one with like a block plane in it. It's like a combo thing. And then they offer uh, like a larger, like number four plane with it. Um, but it's like very cheap plastic candles. And I think it has something else in the pack too. Um, but that whole entire pack together, I think is like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. I, I don't think it's much at all. It's, it's very cheap. Um, this is kind of their higher end plane. So this they say is a number 33 plane. Um, I don't think this is meant to be a number four smoothing plane, which is kind of the common planes that, that someone would use. Um, they, they're calling this a number 33. I think it's supposed to be a number three. I've never heard of a number 33 before. I could be wrong though. So, um, you know, but it's a smaller version of a number four kind of. So it's, a, it's just a hand plane, it's just a little bit smaller. Um, it's kind of like a big block plane, I think, with, with handles and a tote and stuff. So take it for what it is. I don't think you want to smooth out an entire board with something like this, it's a small, but you know, it, it might get you, you know, some, doing some smoothing on some smaller projects. Uh, the reason why this is kind of a higher end plane, it does have uh, you know, kind of wood handles on it. Uh, the totes kind of painted, um, and it looks like it has some like double adjustment screws here on the frog, uh, to, to let the blade in and out. Uh, it's supposed to have a cast iron, high carbon body, hardwood handles and brass fittings. Um, so, so yeah, it, it, it's not, not going to be by all means the top of the line. This, cost $19 in store when I bought this. So, um, you know, I'm not expecting great things, but we will compare it to the only thing I have close enough to compare it to would be the Stanley number four sweetheart line. This thing is going to be way better, but this thing costs way more. Um, so if you're getting into woodworking and you want to just try hand planing, this might be a viable option. We'll see. Let's get into it and find out uh, if it's good or not. Okay, so to get started, here's the outside of the box. It actually does come in a nice wood box or a cardboard box to store these things in. So it might be, uh, you know, might be something good to store it in. The other one, the, the, the stuff with the other plane, the bench plane and stuff, just comes in like a plastic, you know, uh, you know uh, blister pack type thing. So you're not storing it in that. So it does give you a nice cardboard box to, to store it in. That's no, by any means, no like a wood box or anything, but it does come in a nice box. Um, it's the Windsor Design number 33 bench plane. Uh, it says exquisitely crafted hardwood handles with brass fittings and a hot cast iron high carbon body. Uh, it is eight and five sixteenths inches long. The blade width, let's see if I can get better light on that. The blade width is one and 0.775 inches long. So pretty much one and three quarters inches wide. Uh, the blade angle is 23 degrees, which is normal. And it has a fixed mouth. And I'll explain what that means when I get into it. Uh, let's see. Back of the box, distributed by Harbor Freight Tools. Uh, nothing else too crazy uh, out of the box. 
The box isn't cheap. Uh, you know, it's it's not super high end, but it's good enough that it'll store it. So inside we got our, we have our plane that is in a plastic bag. It's got oxygen absorber inside of it, which it's not in the bag. So I would have expected it to kind of be in the bag, but that's okay. All right, so we'll take it out of the plastic bag. Obviously you can't put it back in the bag. There's no way to open it without ripping this, whatever, just kind of heat, oh, well, maybe you could have heat press seal, but. So I would do that if you can try to open it so you could store this back in the bag. I like to store my planes in the plastic bag if possible with that oxygen absorber, even though that doesn't work after a while, but I oil all my planes and put them away in the bag. So it try to try to keep that moisture from attack, attacking it. All right, so here is the plane. Let's move the box and bag out of the way. Here's the plane. Um, first impressions, it's, it's oily. Everything is covered in oil. Um, the handle itself is not terrible. It does feel fairly comfortable in the hand. The, the front handle feels okay. This, this brass uh, screw is sticking up a little bit, so that's going to make a hot spot after some time. Um, you know, the, but that can be fixed. It's got some knurled handles here that are going to adjust the, the depth of the cut. I'm not a huge fan of these dual screws like this because um, you wind up tilting it too much and trying to get it straight can sometimes be a pain. I like the Stanleys that have that kind of toggle to go back and forth, but again, not horrible. Um, looks to be just like some chrome, some chrome uh, some type of steel. I don't think that's aluminum. Uh, and then the retaining cap is pretty small. It looks like cast aluminum. It's really rough on this side. Oop. That's how you drop it. It's really rough on this side, but uh, the back side is pretty smooth. Everything is very oily and slippery. So unscrew that, that gets it down. And then you can kind of tension that down a little bit. Um, it's very lightweight small but i feel like it's big enough that you could do some work with it these edges here just grabbing it there so grabbing it where your hand's going to be this edge right here is very rough um so not a very good finish on this by any means this these sides of this are really really rough so just like they passed over it with the machine or the you know the milling machine probably super super fast on this uh, same with the bottom. I was hoping the bottom would be better, but that bottom is really, really rough. Um, I doubt it's anywhere near flat. So this is probably going to take quite a bit of work to get it to be flat. And looking at the blade underneath there, uh, I can see there's a lot of machine marks on that too. So we're going to have to do a lot of work to get this thing functioning right, but we're going to test it right now, see how it works out of the box. Um, probably not the best. I don't know if you can see in here or not. Let's see. The handle comes down, but doesn't rest uh, rest flushly on this body. Uh, it kind of curves up there. I don't know if that's a flaw in the handle or if that's just how it's intended to be. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the front handle is, I mean, it's got good feel. It's got some like lacquer on the, on the handles but nothing terrible it doesn't feel too bad i don't know what kind of hardwood this is it looks maybe either beach beach or maybe that's some kind of maple i'm not sure what that is and it doesn't say it just as hardwood handles so more than likely maybe maple hard maple or something maybe ash or I don't know what that is. 
It definitely has some deep grain to it, so I don't think it's maple. They've got some type of finish, so it's harder to tell. Um, but it does have some deep stuff, so that may be ash, to be honest. I don't think it's oak, so yeah, not sure. But it's nice. It's got a nice look to it. Um, like you said, it, it feels fairly comfortable, so I don't think I'm going to mess with that or anything. I'm, I'm not looking to tune this thing up into a Ferrari by any means, but all right, I'm rambling too long. Let's put the piece of wood in the vise and see if we can do any type of planing with this straight out of the box. I don't, I'm highly doubting it's going to do anything great. Well, let's give it a shot. All right, so I've just got a little piece of three quarter inch pine here. Um, should be able to edge plane this fairly easy. So, let me see, do a quick look, sight down the plane here that is, oh, this thing might be really twisted. But let's adjust the blade so we can at least see it popping out. There we go. All right, we'll see what this can do. All right, so, I mean, it, it's a pretty thick cut. So I'm gonna maybe take a little bit off and see, but it is cutting out of the box better than I thought it would. Um, let's, let's back these blades off a little bit. And try again. Okay, so we're not cutting at all right now. These threads are coarse, so it's like barely touching that is going to advance the blade pretty good. Nothing. Oh, this frog is really loose. There's nowhere really for this to lock into here. As I'm tightening this, the frog is like pushing its way out. Or the, the uh, retaining cap, sorry. And I can tell it's like twisting it real bad. Let's see. Adjusting this thing might be kind of a nightmare. No, that, see, that cap fell off again. So there is something wrong with this cap where this screw does not rest in here. So, okay, so that's locked down, right? And if I screw it, so this, this cap keeps popping off and it's supposed to be able to lock down. So I'm gonna push that in real hard and kind of torque this down. Maybe I just had it out of place. So we'll try that and see how that works. So now I'm way advanced. Yeah, look at, as soon as I take the blade out, this thing pops right off. So I am not impressed with this cap at all, this retaining cap. I feel like there should be a groove in here for this screw head to lock into better, but it's not. Um, yeah, not a fan of that at all. I don't even know how I could fix that without really doing some machining work to this to this cap. All right, so let's try to just advance the blade. There we go. All right, let's try this again. Oh, I'm way too aggressive. So, I mean, the blade is surprisingly sharp from me not even looking at it. Um, it is cutting really aggressively, 
and I find that every time I go to to take some blade off, right? Now, you know, pull the blade back a bit. As soon as I do that, okay, that's still tight. Let's try that. See, that's way too little now. I'm not doing anything. So let's see. Bring those back. So now I'm just, I'm touching the bottom. And I'm gonna advance the blade just a hair. Nothing. Another little turn. There we go. Okay. That's not horrible. We're getting eh, fairly consistent shavings. We're definitely thicker on this side, but that could just be the blade angle because getting these to line up straight is, is a pain, man. I hate doing that, but we're not cutting horribly out of the box. I doubt this is flat by any means. But it might, might be cutting okay. Yeah, we're, we're a little low in the inside corner. But like I said, that could be the blade. All right, so we did a cut test on it out of the box. It is planing wood. Um, like I said, this is soft pine. I don't know what that's gonna go up against a piece of oak or something, but it is planing wood out of the box. Um, it is thick. You're not gonna get that nice glass finish uh, out of the box. Even when we pulled it back, when we were trying to get some whisper thin shavings. Um, you know, here's some like thinner stuff. We were getting some thin stuff, but then it was not very consistent through. So, I mean, for a $19 plane, I'm not expecting anything else, you know, but, um, so initial thoughts, these screws are annoying as all tomorrow. Um, that's pretty frustrating to be able to have to do that. And, and they're very touchy, very sensitive where, and I think that's part of this kind of coarse thread, a finer thread would have been a little nicer to be able to really dial in those those uh those knobs there or that blade depth this cap retaining cap is kind of frustrating um it's, it's popped off twice now and i don't know if that's my fault or not we're gonna have to play with that a little bit more i feel like it's not like that's a good grasp but it's not locking in very well so for example Here's my Stanley number four. Still has that same kind of screw, screw cap, and this is a sweetheart, right? But see how this one has that groove in here for that for this uh, screw to kind of lock that screw head to lock into, and then you can tighten that down. Or this one doesn't have that. It's just it's on a downward slope. So as you're tightening it as you loosen the blade and this is pulling back on this because this is so rough that the blade is grabbing it. It's the blade is grabbing that cap and pulling it back off of this because it's not finding any tension or resistance to pull back on. So not a huge fan of that. Um, but like I said, $20, trying to keep that in mind. So there it does kind of clip in a little bit there. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's, it's not horrible. Um, let's take it apart and see what the blade looks like. So we've seen this cap. Um, this is, by no means do these have to be like super smooth underneath, but like, so that's my Stanley number four. That's the sweetheart line, right? But if we look at something like the older version of the number four, so here's my like 1930s. Stanley number four. Again, same thing. Like this, this cap doesn't have the screw, 
but this cap has kind of that flip lever where it has that notch where this screw retain screw kind of locks into so when you're pulling the blade back this doesn't want to come back with it this is a tried and true design it works very well the bottom though is rougher cast iron than the top you know it's not finished but it is smooth um where so you lock that in boom that's locked down tight where this one is really really like i mean this is like it feels like 80 grit sandpaper so not a fan but see now like look down in here they've got a groove down in here like it would hold that's weird so down in here there's a groove that looks like it would accept a screw head and one here kind of so i don't know what is going on here if they've got the mold upside down or what is going on there but anyway so that's just some comparisons against the number four i don't have a number three to compare to but you can see here's the original number four the size difference between the two you know so back to back the number four has got some distance on it uh, and a little extra weight so back to this number three or 33 um so we're going to take this off and let's see what the blade has to offer so first thoughts this blade is super it is not machined well at all well i mean it has machining marks left all over it um i can feel a bit of a burr on the back side so obviously it wasn't sharpened that well and these are you're using this blade these with these notches to kind of advance it and and retract a blade uh here's the actual bevel itself let's see are we flat across so the blade is surprisingly flat across out of the box um it doesn't it, it's fairly sharp uh I, by no means is it razor sharp but it is fairly sharp but there is a bit of a burr on the back um so that's the blade not terrible but it's going to need some work to kind of get that thing in a serviceable order so the inside the frog is fixed to the body so that's not adjustable like some of the stanleys have um and these are those adjustment knobs uh to get the blades in and out i'm wondering if i could get some fine threaded ones and replace these but then you're having to retap all that so probably not worth it for a 19 dollar plane these coarse threads on here are make it very difficult to um to advance and pull out with like any type of precision by any means these uh the, where the blade rests are painted surfaces so they're not machined by any means they're not going to to slide well don't know how flat that is probably not flat at all um, but even like adjusting this in and out is not the uh, the easiest to do so that is the what's it called the windsor design number 33 bench plane from harbor freight um initial thoughts i don't know that this is worth the 19 bucks it does cut out of the box but it's not going to cut for what you want a hand plane to do unless you're literally looking for something to just hog off some kind of wood off uh, off an edge like it's not big enough to do any type of face boards or anything in a good manner unless you have small stuff and then even then i think it's even too small to make it into a scrub plane when i bought this i originally kind of thought i'll turn it into a scrub plane but i think it's even too small for that to even modify to one i feel like you're just going to spend all day you know doing with this um basically what i would use this for would be work that is too big for a bench plane but where i want to just have smaller stuff than a number four 
I don't know. Honestly, I think I'm just going to reach 95% of the time I'm reaching for my number four. Um, so not a fan of this one. Uh, I was hoping it would be a little bit better, especially the handles are nice. They are comfortable. They're not, um, you know, I, if I was going to work with this a lot, I would probably strip this lacquer off the handles, but it's not horrible. Um, the body, the actual body of the plane itself is very, very rough. I, I never even put an edge on it. So it's, I'm seeing all kinds of light in there. So it's not flat at all. Um, it is very, very rough machined. So if you just need a plane, right? Can this be serviceable? Probably. Um, you're gonna have to sharpen it a lot more than like, you know, something like a Stanley or something. But with a lot, a lot of work, you could probably get this working very well. Um, but I feel like the blade quality is very low, so you're probably gonna have to sharpen a lot more than, than normal, than with an, an, a, a higher end plane. Um, getting this flat is going to take a tremendous amount of work to get all, like these machine marks are so deep, you're gonna be sanding for quite a while just to get it to the point where you can start leveling it out and getting all these machine marks off. Um, the edges, the finish is very, very rough. Uh, so you're going to have to deal with all that. This cap is not, um, it's not the best quality. I feel like if they would have spent another four minutes or something and just put a little notch in here, it would work so much better, but it's, but it's very small and it's just, it's just I can't recommend this. Um, I'm going to do another video following up with this and I'm going to try to make this thing work good. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to sand this thing down. I'm going to polish the blade. I'm going to get it razor sharp. I'm going to fix all these little issues. I'm going to try to do what I can with this cap to see if I can modify it. Um, but you're going to, you're talking about hours and hours and hours of work to get this thing functioning, to be a proper smoothing plane or even just a rough plane, you know? Um, is it worth it? Is it worth all the time that you're gonna put into it to save a little bit of money? You're talking about $19, that's a good price, a very good price. But like I said, if you're gonna spend all that time doing it, you can go to your local flea market. I bought this for $5. This is a Stanley war era plane that I spent a couple days with and got this thing running great. This is now my favorite plane. Like I will reach for this over the sweetheart every single time. A, this is so much lighter and, and is like a Cadillac compared to this thing. This thing's a tank and it's heavy and it's annoying, uh, much heavier than it needs to be. But we're talking about this. Um, I can't, I just can't, I can't recommend this. Um, yeah. Why would I use this for? I just don't know. I just don't know that I can say, go out and buy this and you can start woodworking. Um, if you buy this and you're starting woodworking, you are going to have to do so much work to this that I don't know that you have those skills if you're a beginning woodworker to know what to do to get this thing to run properly. Um, I, f I feel like you're gonna have a much better time going to a flea market spending 15, five, 10, 20, I've seen these go over like 20, 30 bucks, which is still a good price, you know? Um, and just tuning up one of these old guys that will just run for you every single time and they'll work and they'll last. Um, you know, they can, if you know what to look for, they can be good. This guy just, it's, it's a toy at this point. It's just not good. I would give this to some kids, maybe to start teaching them the principles of hand planing and stuff, but you're just, you're not making anything real nice with this. Wouldn't recommend it, I guess. I'm bummed, I'm kind of bummed. I was hoping this would be a little bit better. It's just not, so. Anyway, uh, 
If you like this type of content, uh, if you like me reviewing this type of stuff from Harbor Freight, what's good, what's not, uh, subscribe down below, give me a thumbs up, comment below. Um, we're getting into camping season and cooking season here soon. I'm starting to wrap up some of these woodworking videos, but I was in Harbor Freight and saw this stuff and just had to review it. Um, so I just wanted to buy it and see what it was like and let you know. So if you're in Harbor Freight and you're thinking about buying this thing, because it does look kind of good from the package, right? You're like, hmm, nice little hand plane. This could be good. Just, I can't, I can't recommend it. I'm bummed because like my hand, my clamps, some, some good stuff comes out of Harbor Freight. You know, and I feel like it gets a bad rap uh, sometimes. Good things come out of it, but then some real stinkers come out of it too, so. Not a good review, sorry. Anyway, uh, like I said, if you like the subcontent, subscribe down below, a thumbs up, comment, uh, and I'll see you on the next one.